found it. See that dripping right there? Hi, welcome to GearHeads. My name's Jesse and this is Matthew. So welcome back to Matthew. It has been a long time since we've done a video together. Quite a while. I know, so I think, because if you've been following our channel for a long time, we used to do Miata videos together all the time and we're finally back today to do a Miata video together again. <laughs> and I think, I don't think we've done anything together in the last year and a half. Well, video it's wise, been, we still hang out all yeah. the time, but we, don't, we, have, we haven't done videos. So anyways, Welcome back to Matthew, and let's get on with the project we're going to be doing. So, I mentioned in the last video, I think, that uh, there's a few things I want to get taken care of on the Miata before I really start moving ahead with the turbo project and getting that done because I don't want to do all that work and then still have um, some other potentially major problem <laughs> with the car or hurt something worse or whatever. So, I've been having to top off the coolant lately, and I don't know why. So, I can only imagine I've got a small leak somewhere, and this stupid thing, we had coolant leak after coolant leak with the heater core situation, and the, the drain plug on the radiator. Mm -hmm. I, from the best I can tell, and I've been able to see when I've looked, I can't see it leaking anywhere from the heater core, or from the radiator drain, or anything else. Uh, so we're going to actually test this the right way, and I'm going to show you guys how to pressure test your cooling system. It's not hard, it's like a really stupidly easy job to do. Uh, all you need to do is either go buy a cooling pressure tester, they're not too expensive, uh, especially if you go on Amazon or something like that. I'll show you guys an affordable one down in the description and put a link there. And I'll also put a link for the one that I'm using. Uh, I use it at work every day and so far I've been really happy with it. It's a pressure tester and a vacuum filler, which mm. I'll get into later. I'll probably do a video reviewing it uh, in the future. But for today, we're just going to be doing the pressure test. So if you don't want to buy one, feel free to go to AutoZone or Riley's or a parts store like that. A lot of them will rent out uh, pressure testers. And the nice thing, at least with Miatas, if you're doing this on a Miata, is that it's a pretty. It's one of the basic fittings that they include in those kits. Because if you have something newer and fancier, you might have a special, you know, Scoot. attachment or whatever for your your coolant reservoir or your radiator cap or whatever. So if you're working on a different car, keep that in mind. You'll need to probably get the right adapter for your vehicle, but if you're on the Miata, whatever basic rental one you rent should be fine. So anyways, let's go over to the car. I'll get the kit out and let's see what we find. Let's do it. All right, so here's my kit. Now, if you go and rent one from the parts store, it's not gonna be a big fancy kit like this. Not that this is fancy, but it does have all the adapters I could possibly need, which is what I really liked about it when I bought it. And it has a vacuum filler, like I said. But this is the coolant pressure tester right here. There we go. And then we're gonna need the right fitting for the Miata, which I believe is this one right here. Nope, I just went and checked. The Miata one's gonna be this one right here. So like the med medium sized, you know, standard old school radiator head fitting. So I'll just go ahead and put the actual cap here so that I don't forget it when I put this one back. If you have one of the parts stores one, it's going to go ahead and attach on top of your radiator just like your factory cap does and spin on, similar to this one, and then you'll attach the gauge to it. This one's nice because it's got this quick connect fitting, so that's on tight, that snaps on, and then I've got my pump here, and I go ahead and pump this up. One thing to consider is don't go ahead and pump this up all the way and put way too much pressure in the system. You can cause leaks and break other things that way. Look at what your radiator cap is rated for. The, the one that I have on this right now is a 16 pound cap, so I, I can go to 16, 17, maybe 18 pounds, but don't be trying to go to 20 or 30 pounds on it. You might end up causing more problems. So let me go ahead and just pump this thing up to 16 pounds. All right, that's pretty much it right, right there. All right, well we got lucky because I just put this thing up to 16 pounds and I can already hear coolant dripping somewhere and it's starting to drop pretty quick. Um, what the goal is here is to put it up to the pressure that the cooling system could potentially see and then look for leaks. So uh, if you don't hear or see anything right away, go ahead and just leave it and then you know, keep an eye on where it is and then check it in 10, 15 minutes and see how much it's dropped. But oh my goodness, look at how, yeah, look at how mm -hmm. fast it's dropping. It's already going down. And I can even see if you go left a little bit, it's starting to bubble here. Maybe I just need to tighten up this hose a little because that hose is not old. But I, I was just seeing little bubbles come out of here. Oh yeah, look at that, see? Oh, yeah. oh, oh. whoopsies, that was me. I just, I just messed up the seal on this by uh, hitting it with my hand. So let me pump it back up again. There we go. 
Okay, that's about 17 pounds there, 16, 17. And it's dropping. So I was hearing coolant a second ago. I'm gonna go ahead and go look and see where that coolant's dripping down because it's definitely leaking somewhere. All right, I'm not gonna be able to show you on the video because it's really tight, but I can hear it and see it dripping on the ground uh, underneath the car towards the back of the engine. And it's going down on top of the transmission bell housing. So I can't actually see exactly what it is that's spraying out right now, but it's coming from it's either gotta be coming from the hose because we have a coolant reroute on this going back, or it's gotta be coming from the sandwich plate where the, uh, the thermostat housing is relocated to the back. Uh, or there's a couple other little water fittings on the back of the head there. The bummer is, of course, those are the hardest mm -hmm. ones to get to on the whole car, which is awesome, just my luck. But yeah, let me get a, I'm gonna get a mirror out maybe and look from the other side and see if I can narrow down exactly where it's coming from. All right, I found it. See that dripping right there? Now the only thing I don't know is that hose clamp looks like it's either been moved or it's loose. So I need to find out uh, if maybe that's all it is. It might just be a loose hose clamp if I'm lucky. If, it's, if I'm not lucky, then it's um, the fitting that that hose clamp is, is going on to right now. So uh, like I said, we did a coolant reroute. So there's a different like thermostat housing uh, going on back here than what the factory is. The factory has just an opening and it's got a, the heater hose going in and it's got a one hose going out the other side, um, I think for the, uh, for the throttle body for the idle air control valve. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach my hand down there. Probably won't be able to get it on video, but I'm gonna see if that clamp moves around. And if it does, I'm just gonna tighten it down. And if that fixes the leak for now, then I'll feel pretty happy. Look, this leak's getting worse when I move this hose around. So that's what the leak is. The leak is uh, the hose itself and not the fitting, which is a good thing because that's not hard to replace. I can just get this hose right here, get a new one and pop it on and I'll be good to go. But at least I found my coolant leak. I'm happy that it's not uh, the water pump or something more major that's gonna be harder to fix. So we went ahead and tightened up that worm clamp where it was leaking and it looks like it's holding. Uh, we also shot it with some brake cleaner to clean it up so that we can check there again and make sure that there's no leaks. Uh, we tightened up the hose in the front and we also repressurized it to about 16 PSI and we're going to let it sit there for a few minutes. We want to make sure that it's going to be holding pressure, that it's not leaking anywhere else. Um, but it's looking pretty good so far, so hopefully it stays. So after about 15 minutes of sitting here, this thing hasn't lost any pressure, which is awesome. So I, I've just left the, the, the gauge sitting here and, and took a look at it again. Um, I did look underneath in the back there when I got the chance to after I tightened that hose clamp up. I uh, just used a mirror like this. These things are super useful. I highly recommend them. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description and one on Amazon. You guys can check that out and it will definitely help you if you're ever trying to find issues or look at for things on your car, especially leaks and stuff. They were really good for that. I used a couple small extensions with a universal joint in the middle for an eight mil because I have a worm clamp on mine. I think from the factory they were squeeze clamps. So some long needle nose pliers like this should help you out and you'll have to go from the side to get to it. I remember the first time I did one, it was a huge pain, but it is easier now that I replaced it with a you know, different style clamp. So anyways, if you guys enjoy our videos and find them helpful and you think you need some tools like this, go down in the description and uh, hit up those Amazon links. It's not much, but it really does help us out when you guys go to there and buy stuff. We got a little bit back from that, which is cool, and it helps you guys out because you're getting tools that you need to get work done. So keep that in mind. If you ever need tools, I'll try and always leave links in the description for whatever tools we're using. Well, I hope you guys found that helpful and it answers any questions you guys might have. Uh, I know back in the day before I knew anything about what I was doing, <laughs> I, I would like search for coolant leaks by driving the car and getting it hot, which would, would build some pressure and that works. But if you don't have obvious coolant just spilling out somewhere in front of you, it can be hard to find. And that mm -hmm. one, uh, by the way, it didn't actually start leaking. It didn't leak when I put it under like seven or eight pounds of pressure. It started leaking when we got up to like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pounds of pressure. Then it started coming out pretty good and then it made it a lot easier to find it. So just having a tool or renting a tool like this makes this so much easier and then you can find out what the problem is and get it right the first time so you don't waste money you know, fixing something that it didn't need or whatever. You <laughs> know? Wasting time. Exactly. So anyways, if you guys like the video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button, whatever. What? <laughs> what? Give them that option. Yeah, it's an option. They can use it if they want to. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate <laughs> your support. And uh, definitely hit that subscribe button if you want more content from us. And don't forget, keep wrenching. Keep wrenching.